Bishop Philip Moger, some, some big news. You've been announced as the next Bishop of Plymouth by our Holy Father, Pope Francis. I'd just like to start by asking you how you felt when you received that news from the Nuncio, the Pope's representative in the UK. Uh, well, I was, uh, I was surprised. I've only been a bishop for a year and a half. I moved to uh, the Diocese of Southwark in February 2023 and into my current home in August of that same year. So I'm really just getting the last of the pictures on the wall when I, uh, when I have to move again. And tell me, what will you bring to the Diocese of Plymouth? What, tell us a bit about your style and your character. Well, when I... Um, believe that God was calling me to the priesthood. All I wanted to be and all I expected ever to be was a parish priest. And when I was rector of the shrine in Walsingham, I tried to bring that, that style of ministry to, to, that, uh, to that place and to Our Lady Shrine. And I've tried to do that as an auxiliary bishop. Now, clearly the ministry is different but uh, that's who I am really, a parish priest. So it's, it's the idea of pastoral care, it's building up communities, uniting people, trying as a bishop to be a focus of unity in the diocese, bringing people closer to God and to each other. Now we can tell from that accent that you're a Yorkshireman. What's it going to be like I mean, you've, as you say, made many moves so far, in fact, but how are you going to transplant that, that little bit of Yorkshire into the southwest of England? Well, um, I, I don't know. That, that will be a work in progress, having moved from the Diocese of Leeds to East Anglia Diocese, then to Southwark, and now to Plymouth. Um, there's not much further to go apart from the Antarctic. And um, a serious point, obviously, the diocese has been without uh, a Catholic bishop for a good time. Are you aware of the, the needs of the people to have their Catholic leader after this time? Uh, yes, it's, it's, um, it's come to my attention that um, uh, people are very keen to have a bishop, um, which, uh, which I understand. And um, I, I hope that um, I hope that I can be of service to them after all this time. Now, invariably, there are a few months before the installation on the 9th of November. So tell us a bit about how you can just get used to life in the South West while carrying on as you are for the minute. Yes, it, it will be a challenge, of course, uh, because mentally, um, although I'm living in London still, I'm going to be going up and down to, uh, to the diocese for uh, various things and, and, and to start moving some things. So, so I think it will be phone calls, it will be maybe Zoom meetings, there, no doubt there will be lots of stuff on the internet. I'm very well supported in the, uh, in the presence of Canon Paul Cummins, who's been the very able diocesan administrator for the last two years and he's been a great help and support to me already. Now, it's one of those parts of the country that many people know from annual holidays, going down to the southwest, to the coast. But there are many, many people in the diocese, born and bred, or, or live there permanently. How much of a focus is it that, that we, we remember it's not just a holiday destination? Yes, yes, I think you're right. Uh, there's certainly a challenge because the, the impression can be gained very easily that it's a, a place of great wealth and uh, prosperity and, and everything in the garden is lovely. And there is no doubt that it is a beautiful diocese. The counties of, of Dorset, uh, Devon and Cornwall are very lovely. But nevertheless, there are people who live there permanently who need to make their living there. And that's not always helped if if you only have people there in the summer or for the odd weekend. Communit communities thrive on constant engagement. So it will be a process for me of learning uh, of what things are like, uh, getting to know people and getting to know places, and that will take some time inevitably. 
And of course, our Catholic faith has to grow and the next generation is very important. Obviously, there are plenty of Catholic schools down in the Diocese of Plymouth. How important is that next generation in, in connecting and living their faith? Oh, I think it's, uh, I think it's crucial. It always has been. Um, I can remember people saying back in the back in the 60s and 70s before the Berlin Wall came down that in Russia the only people in churches are old people but they were saying that in the 20s the 30s the 40s so somehow somehow the the faith uh, was retained and and spread now i i think that we can always be discouraged by uh, figures and facts and how many people we don't see at church but i think i think the the mission of our schools is to introduce children to catholic living to catholic truth and to the knowledge that god loves them and that somehow in their lives that is something they can pass on and a quick word for the priests um, i am a priest with you and you know, that's the most important thing. I'm not, I'm not some special being. Uh, God has called me to this ministry. Uh, I haven't chosen it myself. It's God's will. And uh, we're all in it together. And I'm there to support you and to get to know you and to love you. And so finally, Bishop Philip, uh, a message for the faithful of the Diocese of Plymouth. What would you say to them? Well, I think um, I could do no better really than to uh, use the words which are the theme for next year's Holy Year, that we be pilgrims of hope. There are many things both in our world and in our country and no doubt in our own lives that, that can dampen hope, but the Lord is with us. He has promised to be with us until the end of time. And so as we try to live our Catholic Christian lives, and reach out to others and encourage others to come to know Jesus Christ. We have to be confident that the Lord is with us always.